What's going on guys? It is your boy Cecil with a video here today. I'm a brand new video on a Photoshop tutorial known as, we're gonna call it organic, abstract organic neomorphism effect, shapes. Something like that. Whatever the video is, that's what the title is. You guys know the whole deal. So basically this video is actually inspired by someone known as Martin Newman, I believe his name is. I saw it on Behance. I was like, dude, these little circles look so cool. I wanna make them into shapes. That's what I did. And I feel like you guys like abstract, you guys like color. You guys will love this video here today. And of course I have some little effects that I did at the end that looks really freaking sick. I don't know if you guys are into gradients and like into shapes, which I am for some reason, I just like to know how to do it. That's what I feel this video is. I don't do many effect videos, but if you guys like them, please just leave a like on the video so that I know that you guys like them too. And uh, that's all I got. Yeah, I'm gonna leave now, go to the gym, enjoy myself, enjoy your weekend, enjoy the video. And uh, that's all I got. Peace, enjoy. All right, guys, let's get this video started right here, right now. Hopefully I'm gonna show you guys how easy and quick this actually is to do for the record, okay? So first things first, we're gonna use the ellipse tool. Okay, and on this ellipse tool, we're gonna have our fill turned off, which is this first box, okay? And our stroke turned on with any color doesn't really matter. I just use white for myself, okay? And then of course your actual stroke width is at 1.4 points. You press enter on your keyboard, you click in the middle of your canvas, hold alt and shift afterwards. Then you kind of stretch your circle just like so. And now you guys made a circle. There you go, a little Photoshop technique. I know, relax, relax, I know, it's just a circle, okay? So make a new layer right above this ellipse tool, okay? And then right click, click mask the new layer to the ellipse circle, okay? I'm gonna call this stroke for the record to make it a little bit easier because it's not really a circle because we're gonna have another circle layer in the future of the video, okay? So on our circle or our stroke, this is gonna get super complicated so fast on our new layer, okay? We're gonna use a purple and a pink as our, or a purple and an orange as, or pink and orange. Dude, English is. Pink and orange as our foreground color and our background color, right? To have these kind of like locked in and loaded. So for the record, if you don't have light shots, which is the plugin, like a print screen program, like a, like a Gaiazo, right? Light shot, right? If you press print screen on your, uh, on your keyboard, you highlight over my colors, you press control C, you bring it into Photoshop, press control V, and you get my colors just like this right? Then on this new layer, you can use your brush, okay? You hold alt on your brush and you can just select my pink and then select my orange, let go of alt and you guys can just click, right? Boom, boom. Just, I, if I blew your mind right there, I love, I love that I did that. I just don't want to see my hexstone colors ever again in my life, okay? So, okay. So on this layer, of course, fill it in with pure pink, zero harness brush, okay? Then change your color to orange, click on the top or the bottom left, then click on the top right, just like so, make yourself a nice little simple stroke gradient and we're good to go, okay? So next thing is make a new layer right below everything, hold control and select the thumbnail of your stroke layer, just like so, to give yourself a nice little marquee selection of your circle, okay? So I'm gonna quick fill it in any color, which is alt, backspace, a quick fill in any color. It doesn't really matter what color it is, just quick fill, alt plus backspace for your shortcut, control D to D select, go to your fill, lower it down to 0%. That lowers down basically your opacity in a way, but keeps the opacity of your layer styles. So of course, double click on your layer to bring up your layer styles. Okay, inner glow, blend mode at normal, 100% opacity. I'm gonna use a nice orange tone right here, right? Press okay. Zero stroke for the record, this is the same orange as this right here, basically, right? It was a little more pigment if I really want it. It doesn't really matter too much because we're, we're gonna be putting a color over it anyway, okay? So press okay, stroke at zero, size at 40, and then range is at 70 contours at your simple slope line. Press okay. Then on this layer, we're not done just yet, right click on it and then convert it to a smart object. And now you guys have yourself a simple inner glow. I know, I know, guys, relax. I know it's really easy. It's, it's, it's way more easy than it looks, okay? Um, inner glow, we're gonna call that layer inner glow. So we're gonna make a new layer right above our inner glow layer, right click and clip mask it, okay? Just like so. And then for this layer, we're gonna put in our colors, okay? So I'm gonna firstly put in our dark blue on the bottom left, okay? Then I'm gonna skip this one. I'm gonna use this purple right here and put it on the top left. Then I'm gonna skip this one. No, I won't. I'll click on this and use this a little bit as well. Take this one right here, however, put it on the top right, okay? Take the pink and put it on the bottom, okay? And then the orange, I think, is already here, but I'm gonna put a little bit of orange right in the bottom right here. And I'll say this little lighter tone blue. I'll do it last and I'll say like, where does it look kind of too similar? I think right around here looks a little bit too similar. So I'll add it right there, okay? Now I'm all good to go. And for the record, I, you can't see my market selection, but it is still there. You guys just can't see it. Um, Oh, there was no working selection. I'm tripping. I'm super tripping. Okay. Uh, all right. So now we have our all our colors in there, looking all nice and little rainbowy kind of thing, right? And looking pretty good. Okay. So next thing, we're gonna make a new layer. Hold Control and select the thumbnail layer of the stroke layer, and that will give us a nice little inner circle. Of course, once again, a little marquee tool selection of the circle. So on this layer, this is gonna be our color circle layer. Okay. 
We're going to take our brush, select with the first color, and just kind of fill it in. Second color, kind of like fill it in just like so. Third color, just fill it in as well. And for the record, by the way, I'm kind of using a pretty big size brush with zero hardness, of course, right? And then kind of going around the edges, make sure I have all my colors actually in there, right? So I'm going to take this color here, right? I'll say I want to add it like right here, I think. Take my pinkish tone, like add it in there as well. And I'm going to say to myself, that's pretty accurate. We're looking okay. Press Control D to deselect it. And we got our colors on the inside now, okay? Right? So now on this layer, however, we're going to go to Filter, Blur, and we're going to use a Radio Blur. And with the radio blur settings, we'll be at 100% amount for the radio blur. Blur mode on spin, and then best, press OK. What should happen here is your colors look a little bit kind of like, like you're gonna just put them on there. But with this layer, it makes them look a lot more clean and like very, very much so blended. You can kind of see the before is like this, right? This is after. It looks a lot different. You get less banding lines, which is really, really good for us, right? And however, though, if I kind of look over here, this is also light shot, by the way, I can use the, the, the draw thing. Right around here, you're gonna, you gotta kind of see it's like a little bit like banding lines right here. So what I'm gonna do for myself is come press Control T to free transform on this layer. Hold Alt, select the anchor right here and drag it out just until it gets rid of all those banding lines around that. Press Enter, right? Now, of course, we gotta cut around the outside. So we're gonna hold Control again. Select the thumbnail of the stroke layer. Press M on our keyboard, which brings up the rectangle marquee tool. Right, which gives us the option when we right click to select the inverse, go back on our circle color layer, press delete, gets all the lines nice and clean and looks nice and simple and we're good to go. Okay, so we're not done with this layer, however, yet on this color circle layer, make a new layer, right click, convert, or not convert to a smart object, create a clip mask, take our brush and select our background color. Now the background color for the record is a pretty important thing, I forgot to almost say it, but the background color hex code, okay, is hex code A7A7F1, which is a nice little kind of like a purplish, light tone, bluish, pinkish. You guys get the point, right? Press OK. Then on this layer, we're going to click on the middle with a pretty good size of the brush, just like so, once, twice, and we're good, right? Like it's a nice little look that kind of looks almost like transparent on the inside. It gives it more of a bubble feel, which looks really, really good for the kind of like the neomorphism look that we're going for, okay? So, make a new layer below everything. Select the thumbnail, of course, of the stroke layer once again with holding control to select the market selection. Then M on our keyboard for the rectangle marquee tool, right? Which is this tool right here. So then goes the option to right click, select the inverse. Now on this new layer, this could basically be our outside outer glow layer, okay? Right? Take our brush, start off with our first color right here. And I know that's on the left side right here. I'm not, I'm not gonna start there then. I'm gonna go over here and say blue on this side. Oops, let's get our hex code. I need those above that. Okay, then I'll say secondly, or a third color right here, add that in there. Okay, the fourth color, add that in there. Right, then I get this color right here, add that in there. Let's add in our nice, like, this is my favorite color in the entire thing, which makes it look really, really nice. And then I'll say to myself, I want a little bit more of like this blue, like right here, I think, right? I'll make a little more smaller brush, get that blue in there as well. Now this can definitely be a little bit tedious. Of course, you'll probably go around a circle a few times. There's no harm in it for the record. But what I would really recommend you to do is on this purple, this fourth purple right here, I'm gonna take the blend or the color, make it a little bit darker. This has like a highlight, right? I want this side to be like a shadow. Okay, so I want that purple to be a little bit more like pigmented and then make the shadow a little bit more or highlight color a little bit more there as well, like this. Okay, then I'll press Control D to deselect. And I think that's pretty good. Yep. I like it. Perfect. So basically the whole idea of this neomorphism thing is like kind of nice with shadows and stuff like that. So this side right here is more of a shadow. This side right here is more of a highlight. However, up here is more of a highlight and right here is more of a shadow. So it kind of plays this really fun little theme. That's why it kind of looks really, really cool. If you guys look on the thumbnail right here, or if I zoom this out, it looks a lot cooler and look like it's kind of like floating above the actual colors. It's really fun. Okay. So next what we're going to do here is if you want your colors to be more vibrant for the record, I would just basically group these together and then even just with this outer glow right here, Use any adjustments, a vibrance, take your saturation, throw it up. Of course, clip mask it on, of course, right? Same thing with this group layer right here. I'll take the same exact vibrance, clip mask it as well, and add in those colors, make sure it looks a little more vibrant. I think it looks pretty cool when it's more vibrant in my case. And of course, your colors do matter as well. And of course, your background color does matter as well. But all that stuff, if you want to get more colors, you can even like cheat code it, use like a hue and saturation above it, right? And go through it, right? Um, which is also a really fun way to cheat code what colors really work well together. Um, or put it in like, this is way, this, I'm tangents. Tangents, dude. Illustrator, you can use like recolor artwork and have a really good recolor artwork thing that makes your colors look way, way cooler. You can find some really cool color combinations like that too. Okay. So on this layer, okay, now we have all this. Please go away. Please go away. 
delete okay there we go so on this new layer we're gonna make right now new layer just like so we're gonna set the thumbnail once again of the stroke thumbnail layer and then hold alt backspace to quick fill in any color doesn't really matter once again same thing as inner glow basically we're gonna lower the fill down to zero double click for the inner uh glow effect just like so however we're not gonna change we're gonna change from orange to black okay and for the black we're gonna change the opacity to about 20 30 percent i think is pretty good 30 percent same all, all the same things that the out of the of the other orange glow press okay right click smart object take your layer mask your brush okay your nice black brush and of course like i said before this side right here is more of a highlight right so over here on my color that's this color right here right erase around okay and then everywhere else with the oranges i think is fine this blue right here is perfectly fine now if i click you can see it's only really on the left hand side which is more of the shadow side and i think that's pretty good so if you, if you kind of want to skip that, you could, but for the record, I think it just adds a little bit more depth to it, which I would recommend to add it, okay? So, however, you are now, you're done, officially, technically. Hold your, uh, click, on your uh, click on the first top layer, hold shift, click on the bottom layer, the outer glow layer, press control G to group it all together, then control J to make a duplicate, get rid of this one, we're we'll gonna call this, we're gonna call this backup, okay? Right? So this layer right here is gonna be our, our, Neo color. Yep. And then control T to free transform. And I'm going to go ahead and shrink this just like so. Just like so. Oops. Boom. Okay. You'll obviously notice that we have hard lines here. Of course, if I right click now and convert it to a smart object, right? We have our hard lines right at the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my layer mask, take my brush, and of course, go over to it and kind of fix them so there's no hard edges on the edge. Boom. Same thing with this right here. Try not to go too much on the inside, just using the edge of the brush, right? And make sure we get that same circle look. Perfect. Now, once you guys are done with that, however, you want to make sure, of course, you click and convert, convert to a smart object once again. That way, you don't have any issues with any of all the other things, okay? So, what I want to do now is I'm going to go to where it says Filter, Liquify. And when your liquefy table pops up, we're going to take our brush size. I think it's a pretty good size, like right here for now. Like, a, this is basically kind of matching the same size as before taking your mouse and brushing it inward of course using the liquify for wrap tool okay and i'll take this one brush it inward I'll, I'll use a smaller brush for this take it inward a little bit make a nice little fun organic shape you press ok and as you see it makes a really really dope shape and for some reason i can't move anything on my canvas it's super annoying uh looks super super freaking sick though okay i fixed the issue where i couldn't move it but look how super super dope this organic shape looks of course if you do move a shape that has liquify on it that is also smart object it will mess it up and kind of like look really weird so if you'd like the shape i'd highly recommend to make a duplicate of it right click on it go to a smart object then move it around that way you don't have any issue with actually move, uh, morphing it ever again but look how sick that freaking looks of course with your original layer by the way you can hold alt drag it Okay, you can hide this one if you guys wish to. For now, I'll just do it for the tutorial. But if you have a smart object with Liquify on it, you can go right back into Liquify, extend on the out of, of the Liquify from the original, or restore all and go again, right? I can do some like weird, like, let's do some like this and like this and like this. Okay, I'll just press OK off that. Okay, and we got some like this, right? Of course, right click, of course, a smart object if you do like it, so you could move it around and then move it like so. I'll just add in the word Sesso in here. You can kind of get the idea of like, you can use it for like really fun UI stuff or just a fun like design thing or, or design theme itself. Of course, color scheme really matters in that sense. Um, but what I do want to say for the record, right? You can also add in, okay, Blur or Blur Gallery. I'm sure everyone left the video already. So this is for all the people who are staying at the end, okay? Blur Gallery, use an Iris Blur. Take your Iris Blur, move this super, super far up. Okay, look at this, look how sick this look. Press okay once you're done. Look at this, okay? Look how sick that freaking looks. I'm gonna add in filter, noise, add noise, add a little bit of like a noise, like a 1.5. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Okay, tell me I'm not the only person. Please tell me I'm not the only person who thinks this is cool. Please, in the comments below, if you guys are watching still, tell me that I'm not the only person who thinks this is freaking cool. Honestly, it's super, super sexy. Um, if you guys wanna add more of like a kind of look, how, how, you see how like this one looks right here? This is basically because I added in a little more saturation as well. Um, like so, vibrance, add in some more vibrance, just like this right to make it look more more like how i have here but i just want to keep a different color scheme for now but right you can always add in more vibrance you just can't take it away without making it look a little bit too difficult or a little bit too weird but i'm done i want to stop talking i feel like i gave you guys some really cool ideas with just a little blur thing of the iris blur and the noise um hopefully you guys like this video here today if you guys did if you guys are watching the very end let me know was it worth it to show me the blur thing because i just wanted to kind of explore it a little bit further for you guys i feel like it's a little more of a harder idea to how to implement into designs however color scheme 
blurs, things like that, messing with the foreground, the background, can make this effect look very, really freaking sick. So if you guys do like effect videos, please really leave a like on it. Of course, if you guys are new to my video or my channel, all that good stuff, make sure you guys subscribe. And uh, I'm done. I think I'm done. I'm gonna go chill out, relax, all that good stuff. So with that being said, this is HQ out. You're not gonna keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking positive, guys. Bro, who messes up their intro, bro? I love you guys. Don't forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay a freaking product, guys. Later, much love, peace, and enjoy your weekend. Love you. That was terrible.